Hello, I'm Paul Pluter and welcome to the Paul Pluter channel. Remember, like, subscribe and tell your fuckhead friends about my channel. Don't forget, click on that stupid fucking bell, otherwise you won't get informed about the fucking updates as I make videos. So, make sure you do that, fuckers. Don't forget, paid reviews. 20 US dollars plus a little bit of a donation if you want to give me more or else just 20 US. Look in the description for 10 ways you can keep me on full time on YouTube. Man cannot live on Google Ads alone, fuckers. Remember that. So here we go. This is paid reviews. Paid reviews. One way you could sponsor me is on Patreon. You could send a little bit of money every month. Keep me full time. Because if I don't get any moolah, I gotta get a job! Okay, here we go. Hi Arch, I'm 33 years old and I'm an attorney in New York City. I wrote to you a couple of years ago for some advice. At the time, my only watch was a 36mm Rolex Explorer 1. I felt it was too small and wanted your advice about whether I should flip it. You have, your advice was to keep the Explorer and add an Amiga Speedmaster man on a fucking moon! However, I worked against the Pontiff and I flipped the Explorer my current collection is as follows. Number one, vintage two-tone Datejust, reference 16013. This is my dress watch. I purchased this from the original owner who wore it for a few months and then put it in the drawer for almost 30 years. It's a complete package with box papers, hang tads, and even the original receipt from 1987. I had it serviced a few months ago and it looks and runs like new. I wear it to work almost every day except casual Fridays. Number two, Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. This is my sports casual watch for the weekends and trips to the pool or beach. I'm going to put an orange bezel on it, which I think will be cool for summer. Number three, Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. I've had this watch for a couple of years now. I don't wear it that often because of the low water resistance and manual wind. However, I enjoy wearing it on occasion with different straps and NATOs for a change of pace. It's a keeper. Number four, I have a couple of Seiko shitters as my beaters. I'd like to add one more watch and would like to hear your thoughts. I want something, I want something a little big and a little blingy. I really hate the Rolex Explorer 2, so please don't recommend that. I'm considering a Milgauss with a white dial, a Breitling Navi timer, or a Sin 903. I've also considered selling the vintage Datejust and adding a steel Datejust 41. $20 on the way, thanks, Will. Thank you, Will. New York lawyer. Now, I gotta tell you, Will, far out, you really fucked me off. You didn't follow the advice on the pontiff. I said, keep the Explorer 1. No! No, 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 Okie dokie, let's have a talk about this, Will. I owned a 16013. Yeah, it's a two-tone date just. Yep, it's it's a vintage piece, nice piece. If it's minty, I'd keep it. If it's not so minty, flick it. Okay, because I've seen a lot of tired 16013. So, I'd possibly... Put that, you know, if it is in really mint condition, I wouldn't wear it. I wouldn't wear it every day. You want to keep it nice and minty. Um, the way you can tell a shit one from a good one, the shit ones have had the, the bezel, the yellow gold bezel, polished to shit. You got the Amiga Seamaster Planet Ocean? Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. Planet Ocean, it's a big, yeah, I can accept that, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. You got Amiga Speedmaster, man on the fucking moon, man on the fucking moon, that's good. Glad you listened to a little bit of my advice. Glad you listened to a little bit of the advice. So, date just, if it's really minty, keep Planet Ocean, yes, I can understand that. Uh, Amiga Speedmaster, yes, tick that, man on the moon. Seiko shitters, everyone needs a shitter. Everyone needs some shitters. Shitters, shitters, shitters. 
I'm glad you didn't waste my time listing all these fucking shitters. That's cool, because I don't want to talk about fucking shitters. Now, let's have a look here. You've, uh, you're talking about... You want to add something of a little bit of bling. Okay, okay, what would I add? You know what I would fucking add here? I'd tell you what I would add. Uh... <clears throat> What would I add? I tell you what we would add. I would add, here's a couple ideas. How about on the used market Breguet Type 20? That is an absolute bargain. That's an absolute bargain. Buy it new, it, it sinks, it, it's like a, uh, it depreciates like a Maserati, okay? Foo! Depreciates as fast as it as a Maserati accelerates. Yep, I reckon that is a very, very, very classy, but classic watch. You want something a little big and a little blingy. Um, okay, you don't want the Explorer too? That's okay. That's okay. No offense taken. Milgauss? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I actually love the Milgauss. I'd possibly go blue. I love the blue dial. That's the one I love. The white, uh, yeah, Clyde has the white one. Yes, the white dial's okay, and they stopped making the white one, so they oh my god, I don't know what happens here. They stopped making this, when they had the white one, it wasn't popular, then they stopped making it, and yeah, then it becomes popular. The white dial, yes, yes, Milgauss is a really cool choice. I'm wearing IWC. Inji, this is IWC's version of the Milgauss. The Gauss, you know, the electric protection, electric wave, magnetistic, magnetism affects these watches. So this is kind of the engineer's choice. Um, now, you actually raise a really interesting thing. Breitling Navi Timer, which I love. I love my Navi Timers. Or a Sin 903. And uh, this is a really interesting discussion. See, I love it. I love it. I love it. You send me an email and I can see how much of a purist you really are. See, for those of you who don't know, Breitling went broke in the 1980s, 70s, 80s. And Sin, Sin, that's the watchmaker, Sin, they bought the rights to the Navi timer. And that's what they did. Now, interestingly enough, uh, when Breitling got Breitling got sold again and they started making watches, they then they then stole it back. <coughs> Nasty vicious lawyers, I'm sure you'd perfectly understand. Nasty vicious lawyers. They pulled it back off sin. But it's a very interesting story, and the <laughs> the 903. I mean, it 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 sells for a fraction of the price of a Breitling, and it's not a copy of a Breitling. It is a Breitling. You understand? So uh, <coughs> that's a very very interesting, um, very very interesting watch. The the Sin is a really really interesting piece there so I I think that is is really mmm it could be a way to go that is a very interesting piece you would have to buy the sin on the used market you'd have to buy the Breitling on the used market um, that's something for you to consider there I am a bit of a brand snob personally I don't know I'd kind of want the Breitling then the the uh, the sin but, um, yeah, yeah, um, very interesting choice. But I, I would say to you, Breguet Type 20, I think for a sn fancy, snazzy New York lawyer, wouldn't that be so cool? It's a sports watch from Breguet, and <laughs> it just rocks. It absolutely rocks. You're also considering selling the vintage Datejust and adding a steel... Datejust 41. Mmm, that's an interesting way to go there. 
I'm not so sure you could pull it off in New York because the dealers in New York are very, very aggressive. They are hard to deal with. And uh, I got to tell you there, I got to tell you, I would be, you know, I find it, I think New York is one of the toughest markets. It's impossible to buy at a fair price, impossible to sell for a fair price. Very, very hard market. New York is, whoo, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, to quote Frank Sinatra. Um... As I say there, you know, that, that could be expensive to do that. If your 16013, your two-tone date just is minty and gorgeous, I'd be keeping it. But um, it depends what you like. Do you like vintage? <laughs> do you like a vintage feel or do you like modern? I mean, I'm a more of a modern. I'm a, I'm a naughty. 90s and noughties. So from 1990 up until 2009, that's the type of watches I like, you know. Uh, noughties and nineties, that's what I like. I reckon that's the sweet spot. But vintage, you know, vintage things are cool. So, uh, yes, there you go. That's some, that's some advice there. So, <coughs> I, I can't fault you on the SIN. I can't fault you on the Navi. Make sure you buy it on the used market. Go on Chrono24, see what they're going for. You want something snazzy, blingy, I, I would go, uh, Breitling Type 20. Uh, Breguet, Breguet, Breguet Type 20, sorry. But uh, I must say, as far as Rolex goes, Milgauss, I reckon the Milgauss with the blue dial, that'd be the, that'd be the one I'd be going for. But hey, 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 I'm only the pontiff. You tell me what you think. So thank you so much, William. Much appreciated. And uh, keep watching the channel. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, fuckers. Archie is back! See you later!